Yana Chan don't need beauty. They have the truth. Tourists catching them on the run would go, what on earth have I just seen and why aren't the police, you know, taking them off to jail? They make these beautiful paintings with their bodies. And it was like an expression of the, uh, the love between them. The rise of YouTube type video has been a real boon. Uh, to the reputation of Jan and Jan. For YouTube to work technologically and for it not to overwhelm the tubes that make up the internet, the quality of the video is slightly degraded. Um, and ironically, the less clearly you see their performances, the better they are. They actually match the aesthetic with a conceptual sort of in everything they do, not just how they sp talk about their art, but also in their performances and in their um, in uh, lighting a cigarette or having breakfast. And this is something I think is really rare and, and tremendous about them. You know, there's a lot of uh, revisionist history going around. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of young curators come to me and want to talk about uh, Vito Acconci or uh, Marina Abramovic, and they want to say, you know, how how did you end up here? How did you end up in D.C.? As if we were some kind of a... Uh, as if we were merely operating in some space that someone else had already cleared in some other city. Um, and that's not the case. You can think of it almost as a mystery cult. Sometimes knowledge, this, this significant data, this, this important, and art is the highest form of data, is, has to remain secret in order for it, it to come to genuine fruition. Um, in other words, um, as many people have said about Yanagi, and they, they were, their, their work you know, has not yet found its time, I think that art coming up is going to become a lot more existential. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be real. And the real is going to be very challenging. I think we're a super-saturated solution waiting for a crystal to drop into it, to make Washington really expand as an art center. I think Jan and Jan may be that crystal. They have been before, they can be again. I can think of something that happened with Alex Mayer. When I was looking at their work, and Alex was turned around, looking at the audience and I say why are you, why are you not looking at that beautiful work of art he said because if you could see the face of everybody else with their mouth open <laughs> the piece in which uh, they just oppose they show themselves against the marshals is that you talk about literally dual icons. It's very, very beautiful. So you have to say, without <coughs> Jan and Jan, where, what, where have we gone to? Or literally, what are we trying to do when we uh, work and think only in a certain way? Well, it was always just Jan exposing himself to every external influence he could possibly imagine. And then me sort of reining him in and saying, let's step back, let's evaluate these things. Let's see if maybe we're not getting things a little bit out of proportion. Jan was a painter when I met her. I was a painter. We were both in our heart of hearts painters and we, we sink or swim with the reputation of this town right here, Washington, D.C. I was recently working on a Gene Davis exhibition and I know that they were at times friendly and sometimes prickly friends with Gene Davis. And it was after Gene Davis had done his fr famous Franklin's Footpath in 1972 in Philadelphia, which was at that time the largest street painting ever done of his stripes. Well, in 1974, there was this big streaking phenomenon, and there was that, that piece of music uh, called The Streak. And so it, they, uh, it was her engagement with pop culture where she decided that together they would strap on these jetpacks on their backs that had different pigments 
that then they ran down the streets of Pennsylvania Avenue in particular for about a, a half a mile, naked, in tennis shoes, streaking basically, creating an ephemeral Jean Day with, with pigment powder behind them. Well, I, I just think that Jan always used to view me as some sort of painter. And sure, in the sense that I was working in a market dominated by painting, I, I guess I was a painter. Really, I just always thought that he was sort of irrationally tied to that idea and that both of us were somehow kind of beyond that, both in years and yearnings for contact with other aspects of aesthetic experience. Most museums in the 60s and 70s didn't have showers. Um, but now as, as curators and directors work longer hours, especially for fundraising and their after hours events at museums, many museums do have showers, which makes it easier for people to tolerate, if you will, uh, performance work like theirs. There's a story Tom Downing told me um, when he knew them in the late 60s, vaguely. One afternoon Tom was walking in Georgetown and saw these two hooded figures. Um, sitting on the on M Street, just immobile. Tom sensed that art might be at work and stepped around to see what might be underneath the hoods. He actually removed the hoods. It was Jan and Jan. They were lost in a psilocybin trance. They were gone. They were on another plane. Their eyes, Tom said, were white. There was no pupil was just white. Tom said he's never forgotten that moment because he said, you know, Jan and Jan weren't really here.